The introduction of intensive cattle rearing with the cattle kept in stables meant a considerable reduction of food available for the vultures, leading to a general reduction in numbers. If there was no extensive cattle rearing in Monfragüe, they would have to bring food in artificially to feed the colonies of scavengers that now live there. Bit by bit, the black vultures extract the muscles, tendons and cartilage from the dead animal. These are the parts they eat, and as soon as they have got what they want, they move away to eat alone, leaving the other vultures to fight over the intestines. As the banquet continues, the fox returns. If he hasn't been able to hunt anything, he will just have to eat more dead sheep, even if that means first scaring off dozens of vultures. Of all the scavengers around the body, only one dares to stand up to the intruder. Despite his strength, a single black vulture is no match for the fox. The majority of Monfragüe is mountainous terrain and it's crossed by two rivers, the Tagus, which flows right through it, and its tributary, the Tieta, which runs into the Tagus in the north of the park. Both were dammed up in the 1960s in order to generate electricity. The construction of the dams had a profound impact on the ecosystem of the area. Many forests alongside the rivers were flooded and the fish were no longer able to migrate up to what until then had been the wild waters of the Tagus. The waters stagnated and became warmer and so many species of fish were only able to survive in small streams or in the upper reaches of the river. Further downriver they were replaced by new species such as the barbel, the black bass or the perch pike. The new visitors were more resistant to higher temperatures and lower levels of oxygen in the water and were able to thrive in rivers which, because they had been abandoned by the autochthona species, contained very few competitors. On the other hand, the number of different species of birds increased, drawn here by the calm waters full of fish and away from the pressure of humans. Today we can enjoy the sight of herons fishing in the river or the mating ritual of the great crested grebe, another of the many species of birds that come to Monfragüe to breed. The couple will repeat the mating ritual over the next few days until they start to incubate the eggs in nests built on the water. The heron has chosen the same rocky outcrop as the black stalks on which it's built its nest. The stalks, in turn, fish in the same waters as the herons and grebes. The autochthonous birds and those introduced, directly or indirectly by man, are in constant contact. They share the same environment and have been able to find their place without upsetting the ecological balance of the park. All of them now form part of this ecosystem and the loss of one species would rob the park of its extraordinary variety and richness.
meadows, virgin forests, crystal clear streams and waters held back by the dams, Monfragüe's Mediterranean forest and much more. For 6,000 years, men have lived here and respected the natural environment. Man's past and man's future. A unique combination where conservation and exploitation have achieved that difficult balance which it is man's duty to strive to maintain.